Welcome to the Yoga Sissel Yoga Videos for Pregnancy. Hi guys and thank you for joining me for this Yoga Sissel video. This yoga video is a prenatal practice. Um, I'm right now in 35, my 35th week, so not long to go. And she's even on the move, so I think she's joining us for a little bit of yoga today. Um, it is, this, is, this practice is designed for those women in the third trimester, but it still will be appropriate if you're in your second or even if in your first trimester. Uh, we'll be using a chair, so not coming down to the floor. Um, you don't even have to be pregnant to do this practice. Sometimes it can be nice to just give yourself a gentler practice um, using some props to bring the floor a little closer. So, grab yourself a chair, take a seat, and sit on the edge of your chair. So, you want to be sitting on the edge of the chair, you want your feet resting comfortably. See if you can get your ankles underneath your knees, or maybe a little bit in front, so that as you sit into your pelvis, your weight transfers evenly down into your seat, you also feel even weight into the front and the back of your foot. So if you've got a bit too much weight into the heel, you might shuffle your feet back. If you've got a bit too much weight into the ball of the foot, like this, then you might want to take your feet a little forward. But regardless, make sure that you feel really comfortable. And then rest your hands on your lap. And you'll notice that can already relax your shoulders. And then closing down your eyes. just allowing yourself to arrive into your body. This practice will be very much dedicated to grounding our energy, building stability and strength and support around the pelvis, the hips, and all the way down through the legs. So as you sit here, if we start at the top of the head, crown of your head, adjusting so that your head feels neatly stacked over your shoulders. Maybe that means your chin is pulled in ever so slightly. And then you feel your shoulders stacked neatly over your hips so that you feel solid and firm into your seat. And then continue following down the inside of your body through the legs, the thighs, past the knees, down through your shin bones, pouring the weight evenly into your feet. Noticing how your feet connect to the floor. And there's a rebound energy down from the earth up through the feet, up through your body, along the spine to the crown of your head, up and out. So we're very much connected between the heaven and the earth. Letting your belly soften and your breath relax, your shoulders heavy. The energy settles into your body settles down towards the earth. And slowly, gently opening your eyes. As you open your eyes, take a nice big yawning salute. 
stretch and the arms out wide, reach out nice and tall. You might like to look up, pressing the feet down a little, reach the fingers up and then bring the hands down. It's like that yawn would wake up in the morning. And then hold on to your right leg, your right knee, and just make some circles with your ankle. Wow, that's a big crack. So my ankles needed this. Moving a few times in one direction and then a few times in the other direction. Get into those creaks and cracks. Especially if you notice there's anywhere in particular that feels a little bit more stuck, you might stay there. And there it goes again. And then we add on the knee. So just make a few circles with your knee. Just trying to lubricate our joints before we come up to standing. My feet are definitely beginning to swell. Don't know about yours. So anything I can do to move my ankle joints helps, excuse me, to pump fluid or back up through the legs. Like when you've been sitting on a plane for too long. Also up across to the left side. So you hold the back of your left knee and then circling a few times in one direction. Might like to get the toes involved as well. You can feel nice. A little bit of stretching with the skin on the soles of your foot. And then going back the other way. You know what feels nice. So do what feels nice, do what feels good. And then we add on the knee. You can even imagine you're trying to draw circles with the tip of your big toe. And going back the other way. So just getting a little bit into, a little bit of life into the, down into the base of our body. And then come up to standing. So you might like to have your chair nearby for support, but we still want to do this next part more with a focus on the gluteal, the butt strength, because that's really going to support around the pelvis, especially as we get heavier, more weight down into the pelvis. So in order to support our posture, then this is the biggest muscle in the body, the gluteus maximus really wants to be on board. So we'll start with the staggered squat. Let me demonstrate from in front first or facing forward. You can have your feet together and then you turn your right. Your, we'll start with the right foot coming, staying forward. So pick up your left toes, turn your left toes out and then pick up your left heel and turn the left heel out. Now, depending on how your hips are feeling, you might need to take your feet a smidge wider just to make space. The toes are pointing forward and it means you've got one foot in front of the other and you're sort of standing on train tracks. And again, we'll salute the signs of taking the hand up nice and tall. And as you reach the fingers up towards the sky, you push the feet, the heels, the toes down into the floor. And then you can bring your hands down and bend evenly at the knees and the hips like you're a, um, an accordion. You might be able to come all the way down, you might stop halfway. So you might come all the way down, it depends on how big your belly is. You might stop halfway. And then we wanna use the bum to push up. Again, the fingers stretch up, the feet press down, and we go again, so bending at the knees. Coming down as low as it feels appropriate, the back heel lifts, and then you use your bum to push up reaching up and if you feel a little dizzy and maybe avoid taking your hands up and just take your hands out to the side and we'll do it a third time coming down if you're coming down all the way to the floor you might reach let your hands go if you're staying up high you might keep your hands on the hips then use your bum push up stretch up and hands down so then it's the second side if you want to have the chair for support so we leave the left foot in front, we adjust the feet, so finding your hip distance. And again, I turned my right toes out and the right heel back. You can also just estimate and slide the foot back. The back, the big toe of the back foot lining up with the heel of the front foot. Feeling what space you need to accommodate for your belly and your hips. 
And then again, we salute up, stretching up, pressing down, squeeze your bum. And that can also help to release a little tension from the hips. And then we squat down. Remember, you might like the chair there for support, but it's your bum doing the work. So then squeeze, push all the way up. And then slowly, slowly, as you breathe out, you squat down. Again, you can come as low as that you like, as it feels comfortable. Crack, go my knees. And then you push with the bum, like a rocket taking off, reach up. And then the third time. And then squeeze your bum, push all the way up. Right, and release the hands. Good, so that was a little bit to just build the stability around the pelvis. Then if we go down into the ankles, again, you might like the chair there for support. You might be able to do this with feet hip distance. Most of us will probably prefer doing it with, yeah, feet hip distance, but some of you might be able to do it with feet together. Wow, the baby brain is not a myth, is it? Then from here, we want to lift onto the tiptoes. So again, the breath in makes us light, lifts us up. And the breath out takes us down, heels to the floor. Inhale, lift up. And notice that when we come onto tiptoes, it's easy to sway out the ankles, roll onto the little toe side. We wanna stay on the big toes. So imagine hugging your ankle bones together. And then exhale, slowly heels down. If you're game, you can add on the arms. So inhale, taking the heels up high, maybe the fingers reach up. And slowly exhaling, heels down, hands down. You can also simply keep your hands on the hips. Inhaling up high. And exhaling down. So this is a really slow motion calf pumping, really good for getting moving fluid away from the feet and down. Inhaling up and down. And if you're using the arms, be careful. And you also notice that you can't lock out the knees when you come onto the tiptoes. So you have the knees soft and down. One last time. Breathing in, lifting up and down. Good. So we'll combine a little bit of this with our downward facing dog. So adjust your chair so that you are facing the front of your chair. Then bring your hands onto the seat of the chair. You want your hands flat so you can really push into the chair. It's a really good idea to do this. If you feel like the chair is going to slide out, if you push on the chair, you might like to do it on a yoga mat. That's because the grippiness can help secure the chair. And we step back. So if you can, trying to get your ankles over knee, over knee, over, stacked over the ankles underneath, the hips over the ankles. Good, and we just stay here to begin with. You might like to, in order to keep the heels on the floor, you might like to bend the knees a little so you don't have too much pulling and tension in the back of the legs. And then just start by swaying the hips from side to side. Take the feet as wide as you like, so that again, you've got space for your belly. We're all gonna be different. Swaying a little from side to side. The knees can bend a little, so you can even be standing with your knees bent a lot. Some of us might have almost straight legs. We're still doing the same thing. It's a chair supported downward facing dog. Press the knuckles into the seat and then stretch your hands far away, but the hips are pulling back. So you're trying to dig the heels into the ground, but the hands are trying to reach forward and you get really long in the spine. And slightly, gently, slowly swaying from side to side. Getting a little bit of loose, just into the lower back, the back of the hips. And then from here, inhale, looking forward. And exhale, bowing down. Two more times. Inhale, looking forward, lifting the chin and chest. 
and bowing down. Last time, inhale for a half lift and bowing down. Good, so now we're going to add on a little bit of effort. So be gentle with yourself, do only what feels appropriate. Inhaling, let me just adjust. Inhaling onto the tiptoes, bending the knees, press the heels down, and straighten the legs. Inhaling onto the tiptoes, bending the knees so you really get down low. And then press your heels down, stretching your Achilles, the back of your calves, and straighten the legs. Three more times. The inhale floats you up. And the exhale takes you down. Then inhale, press the heels into the ground, and exhale, straighten the legs. Like a little circular sequence, inhaling up, exhaling to bend. Inhale, heels down, and exhale, straighten the legs. Last time, inhaling up. Bend. Heels down, and straighten. And sway a little side to side. You might already feel a little bit more stretched out in the back of your body. Let's around the back of your hips, your lower back, the back of your legs. Inhaling, half lift. And exhaling, bow down. Now, remember you want to, you might uh, need to change your position of your feet as we go along. Just make sure you always feel comfortable. So from here, you might bring the feet in a little closer. And you're going to take your right leg out behind you. Notice if you drop the hip. So it might be easy if I should demonstrate on the left side first. When we lift the back leg, it's easy to drop the hip. So even though the toes are trying to point down, lift your hip. So I'll start with my left leg. And then maybe bring it in towards the right armpit, left armpit. And then stretch the leg out. Bring the knee in. Stretch the leg out. So this is really building strength into the standing leg. Bring the knee in. Last time, stretch the leg out and step the foot down. Inhaling, half lift and exhaling, head down. Swaying from side to side. So now I will do my right leg, just easier to demonstrate what was happening with the hip. I'm showing you the left leg first. So my right leg lifts and I want to keep my hips level. It's a little hard to see with the microphone in the way. And then bring the knee towards my armpit, bending the knee and pushing the foot back. Bending the knee, push the foot back. And bending the knee and push the foot back. And then stepping the foot down. Again, we're in our downward facing dog. It can be a nice stretch. Inhaling, half lift. And exhaling, head down. Now very gently, taking your time, coming, stepping the feet forward, and come up to standing. And we place the chair in the middle of the mat. We're gonna do a few chair assisted lunges. So, stepping your right foot onto the seat of the chair, and it's a good rule of thumb to have the foot on the chair closest to the, to the back of the chair. That way if you need it, then it's there for your support, but it's not gonna be in your way. So this is like a lunge we would do on the floor. And from here, you want a little softening into the back leg so you can squeeze the bum a little more. And then we're gonna inhale the hands up and bring the hands down to our heart center. Good, inhaling all the way up and bring the hands down. If you're feeling wobbly, you can take the feet wider. Remember, you need to feel comfortable. Last time, take the hands up and bring the hands down, grounding down the energy. 
we're going to end on a little bit of a twist. So as you take the hands up, keep the legs as they are, hips don't move, just twist your chest to the left, open belly twist. You can keep your arms out at shoulder height or you can take them down, whatever you prefer. And inhaling up, come back through center and then turning to your right. And it's just a little twist. Again, you can take your arms out to shoulder height or all the way down. Inhaling back through center. Open belly twist to the left. The hands come down. Inhaling up. So our left leg is super, super strong, twisting to the right. And if you want to add one last little bit of effort for this last round, you might come onto the tiptoes as you take your hands up, twisting to the left, the heels down, hands down. And then coming up through center. Up and to the right, heel down, hands down. And come up through center. And hands to the heart, heel down. Good. So we're going to stay on this side, leaving your right leg where it is, and then spinning your left toes out to the side. So we all have different hips. Some of us will, will, be able, will need to keep the toes, the, the standing foot, a little more pigeon toed. The key is that you want this thigh parallel to the edges of your mat, this top this front thigh parallel to the edges of the mat, it's like your warrior two leg. And then depending on how open your hips are, you might have pigeon toed standing foot or you might have the toes all the way out to the side. Whichever variation, if you take your toes too far out to the side, you'll pull the knee in and we don't want that. So keep this front thigh parallel to the edges of the mat, knee over your front ankle thereabout, so we get a little bit of a hip opener. And again, softening into the knee of your standing leg, squeezing your bum. So this is our warrior two. If we took our arms out to the side, looking up past the front fingers, broadening across the chest. Just pressing down to the feet and then inhale your hands all the way up. And then we're gonna bring the right elbow onto the right knee. Reach your left arm out far, far away. Now this isn't an excuse to collapse down. Instead, you want to create space here. So lift away from your knee, lift away from your elbow, but keep firming the buttocks to open across the hips. And then we're going to let the arm come down. Inhale, swing it up and taking it down. So getting a little bit of movement into the shoulder and the spine all the way while we open across the hips. Now this time, as you take your arm down, you're going to spin your arm or circle your arm the other way. Inhaling all the way up, back and down. All the way up, over, back and down. And this time, you're going to use the arm to lift you up back to your warrior two. And then from our warrior two, a little slight dancing warrior, reaching your right arm, the front hand up, and the right hand, left hand, back hand reaches back. And then coming up. Good. Now the easiest thing is to leave the chair and move the body. So walk around to the other side. And we'll do the same thing, but with the left leg foot up on the chair. So we're starting with our lunges. You're standing over the back ankle, the front knee stacked over the front ankle and your feet are as wide as you need them to be. Inhaling the hands up. It's grounding down the energy, finding our balance. And hands down. Two more times. Inhaling up. And down. And all the way up. And down. And we'll add on our twists. So we take the hands all the way up, our open belly twist to the right. The hips don't move, so we just want the movement in the spine. Take your hands down as far as they like, anchoring into the feet so to avoid twisting the hips. Taking your hands all the way up and twisting to the left. Inhaling all the way up and to the right. 
all the way up and to the left. And this is why I said you might like to add on. So you might take your hands up, come onto the tiptoes, open belly twist. Whoa. Feel your whole standing leg strong and support you. Take, oh, you can bring the, hand, the heels down, hands down. Take the hands up, heel up. Remember standing on the big toe, hands down, heels down. And lifting up. And we meet that center, hands down, heels down. And then you turn your right foot out. So it's the right leg that's the standing leg. Only turning the toes out as far as you can without pulling on the front knee. So front thigh parallel. And we find our warrior two. Nice, strong base. Firming into the buttocks to help release the tension into the hips. And looking up past the front hand, open across the chest, feeling into your feet. And then we salute the sun, taking the hands up. And we bring the left elbow onto the left knee. So the right arm reaches up and over. So we're getting really long in this whole outer edge of the body. And the hand circles down, all the way up. So brain doing these big overhead circles with the arm. You can even imagine that your arm started somewhere down in your hips, all the way down by your belly, so that your baby's helping to move the arm all the way up and over. And we go the other way, inhaling all the way up, back and down. Moving the arm all the way down from your belly. And on this last time, the arm comes up with you and you're back to standing. Good. So let's just stay on this side so we don't have to walk back and forth too much. I'm gonna come into pyramid pose first. So slide your front foot underneath your chair, left foot underneath the chair, and then bring your hand onto the seat. Again, your feet hip distance or wider. And the back heel wants to be on the ground. So it's not a long stance. You want to have as solid of support in your foundation as possible. Both feet evenly onto the floor. Inhaling, half lift, look forward. And exhale, bowing. Two more times, half lift. And exhale, bow. And half lift. And bow down. And then you're gonna bring your left hand flat onto the mat, uh, onto the mat, it's called the seat of a chair. And then peeling your, le your right hand all the way up past your collarbones, past your shoulders and open up towards the sky. So it's open belly twist. It's a vari variation of Trikonasana, the triangle pose. Then curling the hand down. Two more times, inhaling all the way up. Your feet are almost trying to split the mat apart. And curling the hand down. And last time, inhaling all the way up. And all the way down. And then you're gonna stand up. We're gonna do another variation of our triangle pose where we have more, the back toes again, slightly turned out, slightly turned in. And then with the hips and the spine, pelvis and the spine moving together, you're going to tilt the hips just enough so you can bring your arm to the seat of the hand to the seat of the chair. Your spine doesn't want to be collapsed, it wants to be super strong. Maybe you're on your fingertips, maybe you're on a flat hand. And we just reach up. So as we press down into the feet, pressing down into the seat of the chair, the spine is nice and long, and we reach up through the fingertips, or again, connecting between heaven and earth. If your neck feels okay, look up to the top. You might feel better to look straight ahead, or even looking down. And stretch your arm all the way over. 
And again, two more of these overhead circles where we're trying to keep the spine straight, legs straight and strong. All the way up and over. And go back the other way. Inhaling up. And back. Two more times. All the way up. And back. Last time. All the way up. And hands onto the hip. Bend into the front knee. So you use that leg to push you up to standing. And then we'll walk around to the other side. So placing your right foot underneath the seat of the chair and your hands underneath your shoulders. Feet, hip distance or wider and your back heel is also on the floor. And we inhale, lengthen the spine forward and fold down. Half lift, look forward and down. Last time, half lift the feet, trying to split the mat. And down. And then you can return to your half lift, leaving your right hand, the front hand on the, on the seat of the chair. And firming into the feet, you peel your left hand up and open. And then curl the hand down. Moving with your breath. Slow breath in, to lift and open, and slow breath out to take you down. Last time, all the way up, and down. And bend a little into the front knee, come up to standing. Our second version of triangle pose. Leaving the front foot underneath the seat of the chair, turn the back foot out a little more. And then starting with level hips, straight spine, we tilt on the hips. You can even try externally rotating the front thigh. That can give you more space into the hip. And bring your hand onto the seat of the chair, maybe flat palm. And stretching up. And you're using the buttocks to press down into the feet to anchor your foundation to ground you, but at the same time, the, the engagement of the buttocks helps to open up the hips. The heaven and earth connection, long spine, getting a nice stretch on the side of the body. And we do these overhead circles. Last one over this way. And then going back the other way. Inhaling up. Back and down. Inhaling up. Back and down. And then bend into the front knee. You lift yourself back up. Good. And then from here, release. And arranging your seat once more so that you can sit comfortably on the edge of your seat or back at where we started. You might have your feet a little wider, again, to make space. As we move, I find that it shifts the baby around. So sometimes I feel like my belly is bigger after I do some movement or some yoga. So it's always going to be adjusting, right? So you might need to adjust your feet to make more space for your hips, your belly. And then we'll just finish by grounding down the energy. So again, check that you feel stable, balanced, firm into your foundation. And then sweep the hands forward. As you breathe in, it's almost like you're sucking the breath in through the palms, bringing it in towards you. And then gently breathing out through the palms, Grounding down the energy, grounding down the air. Inhaling, scoop forward, you round forward. Bringing it in and slowly breathing out and down. And for those of us in third trimester, it's very much the energy that we want. So it is very much a 
the energy about moving down, down into the pelvis. Preparing the body for that outward movement. Inhaling. Sucking up. Bring it in. And gently grounding it down and out. Closing your eyes, you might like to do this as a meditative practice. Inhaling through the palms. You might even feel your feet respond as well, like they're suction cups, breathing in through the feet. And breathing out through the palms, breathing out through the feet, grounding down the energy. Inhaling through the hands and feet. Slow, steady lifting up. Bring it in, down and out. Last time, slow, steady breath. Grounding down. Keeping your eyes closed, letting the hands rest on the lap once more. If you're feeling a little warm, you might like to leave the palms facing up. But it can also feel nice to let that warmth circulate within your body and then you can keep your palms down. And just noticing how you're feeling into your body. How does your body feel? Your feet, your legs, your hips. How does your belly feel? Can you relax the belly and receive the breath? And then when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you feel comfortable in your skin and calm in your mind. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste.